because you guys are on a bit of a tight time schedule, I'm going to get started. This is our Buffalo Grove Then and Now presentation, and it's sort of key to some of the buildings that people see around town because since a lot of the historic buildings are gone, we want to give people an idea of the fact that there were, in fact, historic buildings because the town has been around since the 1840s. And since the beginning, it was centered around the farms and St. Mary's Church. And in fact, that's kind of, we, we date the beginning of the town to the establishment of St. Mary's and some of the first masses set there. And really, that's how the people were defining themselves too, because even though Buffalo Grove wasn't incorporated at the time, people definitely thought of themselves as a community, and it was centered around farming and the church. But those weren't the only buildings. So we've got some more of them too. This was, you'll have to work with me a little to imagine that the cars were gone, but this was the Fernbach Tavern. And the Fernbach Tavern was there ever since the 1890s. And it was for a long time the first place and the only place to go out to eat in Buffalo Grove. You could get food there. You could, they had upstairs rooms you could rent as a hotel kind of room. This is where they would hold social events that were too big to fit in anywhere else. So St. Mary's would have actually fundraising concerts here. We have posters for that. Uh, it was, they would do stuff in German, they would do stuff in English. This was the meeting place for people in town. This is where the Buffalo Grove Young Men's Band practiced. This is where the Buffalo Grove softball team would get together both before and after games. And, I was sorry, baseball team. And we're talking 1911 baseball. So, I mean, they were, they were playing that. You'll see various pictures of it upstairs. Uh, but because the town was so small, it wasn't the only job for this building. And in fact, a lot of the buildings that we saw have more than one purpose. So it was the tavern. This was also, <coughs> in the early part of the 1900s, where you'd go to get your hair cut. Because the barber in town did not have enough business to keep his own barber shop going. So he worked part-time as bartender and part-time as barber. He was behind the bar. If you wanted a beer, you could come in and say, Ed, you want a beer? If you wanted a beer and a haircut, you could do that too. You could say, Ed, I need a haircut. You'd go over to the corner, you'd cut your hair, you'd come back, you'd get a beer. It was a multi-stop shop. Even later on, when Buffalo Grove started to get developed, because this was central to the town and central around, it served in the place. This was the volunteer police headquarters. Um, says something that was in a tavern. Yeah. But, uh, and also, before the streets were named and numbered, this is where people could go to pick up their mail. So it's always been a place to feed people and good, good things to eat. What's really cool is that the building is still here today, and that is still one of its main functions, because this is what it used to look like. That's what it looks like today. So it was sort of kitty corner to where you guys are. And in fact, these guys had, the Sherpas had pizza there the other day. Yes, and in fact, the bar, when you walk in, the wooden bar is actually original to the first tavern. So that's over a hundred years old. And it is neat because the Malnati's that owns it now likes the building so much that when Lake Cook Road got widened, they actually picked the building up and moved it back so that they could keep it. That's cool. Well, you know, a tavern isn't the only thing in town. So this is actually what St. Mary's looked like over 125 years ago. At the time, it was a little white wooden church, but as the town grew and changed, and as the farmers got more prosperous, they wanted a bigger, prettier church. You can even see it's a little hard here, but this is a boardwalk out in front. And so this church got torn down in the 1890s. It went from looking like this to looking like what you guys saw today. Um, and it's, it's always been in exactly the same place. It's just gotten bigger. And that was one of the biggest building projects. But what was interesting is when they went from having the little wooden church to the bigger brick church, a lot of buildings around it changed as well, including this. This was the original church rectory. But when they built a new church, they built a new rectory. And this building, got recycled. And it got recycled in a really different way because first of all, it got cut in half. And part of it 
stayed the same. It was just a house for people to live in all the way up until about 10 years ago when it changed again. And this time it didn't even get recycled. This time it got torn all the way down and turned into something very oh. <laughs> That was the Walgreens you saw earlier today. <laughs> but right next to those two were this building. And this is actually the second St. Mary's School. The first St. Mary's School was a one-room log cabin smaller than the room we're in right now. And that was for everybody from first grade all the way up through eighth grade in one room with one teacher. And just like things you've read about, the teacher did board out at different families. So a week with you guys, a week with you guys, a week with you guys, a week with you guys. You can imagine that's not terribly fun for the teacher and it's not necessarily fun for the students. So when they built the next school, they built it like this and it looks like a house on top because it was a house on top. It was a house for the teacher. So they had the shortest walk all to school. They just had to walk downstairs and they were at school. And it becomes especially more relevant to you guys because the longest tenured teacher and the one who went, who didn't necessarily board out from week to week because he was related to everybody, was, and you can just barely see him here, Peter Widener. And he was the I believe second oldest of 13 children. And the amazing thing about that is he ended up being the teacher for his own three youngest brothers and sisters. Oh. So by the time he had gone through and got educated, got qualified as a teacher and come back here to teach, he had his three youngest brothers and sisters. And while he was still a single man as a teacher, he was living at home with the rest of the family. And many, 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 many years later, they inter somebody interviewed his youngest brother and said, well, what was it like having your brother as a teacher? And he said, it was horrible. <laughs> and they said, what? He said, oh, no, I get in trouble twice as much as anyone else because I would get in trouble in school because he was the teacher. And then we're all sitting around at home eating dinner. And my dad would say, how'd the day go? And my big brother would wrap me out, so I'd get in trouble twice. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I didn't like it at all. I was glad when he got married and he could move out. Um, this stayed the St. Mary's School for Buffalo Grove, and which meant, basically meant the school for Buffalo Grove, all the way up until about 1970. Another fun thing to know is in this school, and in the next one you'll see, lessons were bilingual. It was English in the first half of the day and German in the second half of the day. So lots of the school books we've been given, and you'll see some upstairs, are in both German and English. It was still not being necessarily spoken by everybody, but it was still around. Parents wanted their kids to be learning it, and it was still so popular that up until about the middle of World War I, the local paper always printed at least the Thursday edition in German because there were that many German-language-speaking readers during World War I, that's it. Okay, well this couldn't stay the school for Buffalo Grove forever, although it did work for a very long time. And so eventually this building also got torn down and it was located partially where the Walgreens is right now. When the Walgreens got built, it took up the space of several different buildings. In the meantime, this was the next school for Buffalo Grove and this was very exciting because for the first time there was more than one teacher in the school. There were three teachers. So you had first and second grade with one teacher, third and fourth grade with another teacher, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade with another teacher. And after that, you were pretty much done. There was no high school in the area. So if you wanted to go to high school, and if your parents wanted you to go to high school, and not every parent did, you had to go to another town and board with relatives there. Or in some cases, if you wanted to go to a Catholic school, you were actually sent away to Chicago to go to Catholic high school because that's where some of the closest ones work. This is also, and this worked up until the 1940s. This was the Catholic school for Buffalo Grove. At that time, things changed again, and this building got recycled, and it became the rectory for St. Mary's, and the nuns all lived upstairs. And, this is how it looked when it was the rectory. About 10 years ago, it also got torn down and became this set of buildings. Mm -hmm. 
So you guys can see, you were in the old downtown. It didn't look like it, but you were there. And this is the St. Mary's School that got built in 1947, and they've been adding on to it ever since. So in a town, you've got the church, and you've got the tavern, and you've got the school, but the one you guys are most interested in is this one right here. And that was the Widener General Store. This was the first Widener General Store. We like to joke that it was the start of chain stores in Buffalo Grove because it started out the Widener General Store, then it became Widener and Sons, and then as it passed down, it became Widener Brothers. And there were three Widener General Stores. This one and then two other ones as the other two brothers went out mm. to different areas. This was the first store in town, and for a long time it was the only store in town. Not only could you buy a little bit of everything here, and we have receipts, so we do know, buy a little bit of everything. We mean everything from galoshes to chocolate to sheet music to musical instruments. This is where if you wanted a bicycle, you could order the bicycle. Um, but it was the first place in town to have a telephone. It was also one of the very first places to have electricity. So you could go here and buy chocolate ice cream that you did not have to make yourself. Mm -hmm. It was always a place for kids to get a good treat to eat. And what's really neat is that for a long time, it stayed that way. So it got recycled for a while into a music school where people could learn to play different instruments. Later on, and this, this building lasted all the way into the late 60s. And then later on, it did get torn down and it became the bakery that you went to has today, but I like to tell people that the site has always been a place where you could get a good treat. So 100 years ago, you could get a good treat to eat there, and today you can also get a good treat to eat. Some of the other buildings that you didn't see were buildings that Buffalo Grove outgrew as sort of the job, the industry of the town changed. This was the Fernbach Farm Implement Store, which was important when we had farms that needed the tractors. It was also an international harvester dealership. As the town grew and farming grew less, this building changed. It did not get recycled. It got torn down and turned into something completely different. But when farming was the main job of the town, dairy farming was the main source of income. And while people did all sorts of different jobs, we've looked around through the records and figured that for the most part, everybody had anywhere from 5 to 15 cows, sometimes a little bit more, and you were making at least half your money from dairy farming. And when you were dairy farming, you needed a creamery. This was the creamery. It was also run by a widener. It was a creamery. It was a cheese factory. But also, like I said, sometimes buildings had to pull more than one job. So when Buffalo Grove was transitioning from being a farm town into a more modern town, this is also where the first jail in Buffalo Grove was. <laughs> but you can tell we did not have that many criminals because it was in the basement and all they did was partition off part of the basement with studs made from it went from two by fours and chicken wire. <laughs> and that, that, was, that was the jail cell for the first part of the town. It is neat that the building is still here today. Uh, it is not a creamer any, anymore, but if you look closer, you can see it's the same thing because it went from looking like this to looking like that. <laughs> but we also wanted to show you just little houses. And this is one of the little houses. This was exactly across the street from St. Mary's at the time. And this was built for this woman. She was a widow at the time. And these are her four daughters and their husbands. And it was built by her son-in-law, who was the town carpenter. And what we like to show people is that houses haven't changed that much. You know, They've got an upstairs and a downstairs and a front porch. What has changed is how crowded the town was. Because if you look, you can see there are no next door neighbors. Nothing. And this was, if she looked out her front window, she could see St. Mary's. So it was very much, and it looked like this for almost 100 years in a row. This picture was taken in 1899. And then 99 years later, it looked like that. And about a week after that, it looked like this. <laughs> But as the town developed, other things happened too, and I wanted to show you because that building we showed you in the beginning when the rectory got cut in half, this is what happened to the other half. It got moved away and became the very first gas station in Buffalo Grove. 
but it didn't stop there because then as the gas station owners got older and retired, they gave it to their daughter. She didn't want to run a gas station. She had married the man who would have, was the barber who worked in the tavern. And so between them, they recycled the building again and it became a combination house and barber shop. That's why it's got two front doors and it still remained where everyone got their hair cut and then later on, they got older and retired and gave the building to their kids, but their kids didn't want to cut hair. So the building changed again. And this time it didn't get recycled, it got torn all the way down and it went from looking like this to looking like that. All right, we also wanted to show you farms. So this farm became playing fields for Buffalo Grove High School. This farm was not too far from where we are now. This was not a dairy farm, it was a little bit different. This was the spore line chicken farm and it was nicknamed Never Rest, and for good reason, because they had more than 10,000 chickens that they were taking care of. And eventually they got tired of never resting, and so they sold the chicken farm, but people can still remember what it was and think about it today, because it went from being the Sporeline chicken farm, okay, you can't tell, but it's Sporeline Commons, and there's a whole development. So the name stayed even though the farms and the residences left. And then we have this farm here. And this was the Raup farm. Well, one of many, but this was the Raup farm. And eventually, it was owned by three bachelor brothers. And this was as Buffalo Grove was developing. And they finally decided to sell their land. And it's, they sold most of it for development. And they knew <laughs> lots of houses, but they wanted to make a special gift to the town. So they took everything you see here, basically, and they made a deal with the town. They said, well, donate it to the town for free if you promise to put either a museum or a library there. And the village said, that sounds all right to us. So they did. But nothing happened for a while because, of course, it cost money to build things. And then the park district got created, and the village made the same deal with the park district. They said, we'll give you the land for free if you promise to put either a museum or a library there. The park district said, that sounds good to us. And they started to make the White House in the middle into a farmhouse museum to show people how the farmers used to live, which was good until the farmhouse caught on fire and burned down. Oh. Well, but they had still promised to put a museum here, and they still thought it was a good idea. So one building got moved here, another building got built here, then a long time passed, and then another building got built until finally it went from looking like this to looking like this. So you are standing right where that farm used to be. And it is neat because it was given, this three acres that we're on was given from the very start to be a museum for Buffalo Grove. And uh, there's an oil painting upstairs that shows how the farm used to look. Um, and that's how we got where we are now. And in the main gallery, there's another picture right by the barn that has a cow in it, that was taken from about the angle you're standing at, and it'll show you how things have changed, because if you look at the picture, it's got a farm family and a windmill, and in the very back, you can see a church with a steeple, and that's St. Mary's Church. So literally, if the walls of the museum fell down, boom, that is what you would have seen roughly 100 years ago, standing where you're standing. Because this hill, weird as it seems in the air, was not created. This was actually the hill that the farmhouse was on. And as best we know from maps, you're at the highest point in Buffalo Grove. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Which I know says something about how flat we are. People have very active sump pumps. But um, there we go. Done. Open for questions or thank you very much and have fun looking around the rest of the museum. Are we looking at just one farm? Yes. Really? Yes. Main house, yeah, far, far. main house, lots of outbuildings. Yeah, it was. Really, it was spread. It was 80 acres the last time they sold, but it may have been larger than that when all the outbuildings were at full capacity. Yes. What was the size of the normal farm back then? Um. It really depended on who you were. Uh, I can answer you with more confidence about the amount of cows people have, just because we, we have the train receipts for people shipping their milk to sell it. And so 
given an average of two gallons of milk per day per cow, uh, most people had about five, five to seven cows. If you were doing well, you had maybe 10. If you were doing really well, 15. Kind of like 80 acres? Yeah, it was, most of them had between, you know, some of the little bits of farm were 40 acres, you had 80 acres, uh, and then what they had, which would have been really annoying, but not uncommon, because you know people would pass down bits of land to their kids and it would get split up. You'd have 80 acres here, but then you'd have 10 acres over there. Um, and for a long time, although not anymore, around the Des Plaines River, which is not too far from here, people had a wood lot. So they would have like a skinny piece of land where they'd go and they get their get their firewood and they would chop ice on the on the Des Plaines. And but um, and then they would bring it back here. So 80 acres, roughly. There were there were people who had much more. Um, 80 acres is a good average. Just starting out, you'd have yeah 40 and be be working on it. The people who've been here a long time. We had 100, 120 acres. Um, not too much bigger. Than They had such a small farm, they had an outside job then, didn't they? Uh, a lot of them were making mo money in more than one way, yeah. yes. And the farming became, even by the turn of the 1900s, it was very much about sort of feeding Chicago. So there was a, basically, there's a lot, a lot of truck farming going on. But the average farm in Stearns County was 80 acres as well. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I mean, that's what like. What is that, a quarter of a quarter of a section? Is that a quarter of a section? 80 acres? I think so. I think it'd be a quarter of a quarter. <laughs> but, but I know it's that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would be, compared to farms today, it, this is like minuscule. But you, know, they, you, couldn't, you can't compare to farms today, really. And they were they were truck farming for Chicago. They were um, they, yeah, they were dairy farming. They were doing vegetables. We have various reports of occasionally people venturing into sugar beets as a crop, but um, they didn't like the price they got for that, so they didn't keep it up.